Welcome back to the Whatever Gaming Channel. I'm Whoever, and today I'm going to be doing a little top five, five and a half tips I use on how to make money quickly in Dinkum. Just to give you a little scope of how much money I have. Um, that's not going to show me. I have $110,000 on me. And in the bank, currently it's Sunday. You can't see but I have about 1.4 million actually in my bank. And so I have about $1.5 million. I'm at a 50 hour play time. I've only been seriously trying to get money for about maybe 10 hours. And I'm gonna show you how I do that. So without further ado, let's hop into tip number one. So tip number one is gonna be to just collect your daily things that you need to collect things that only pop out once a day that only produce once a day obviously you can make more cheese makers you can make more looms and stuff like that and get more uh, wool cloth cheese a day but right now I only have one um, I don't use it for anything other than you know stacking it up and kind of selling these items so tip number one is kind of stack your daily items your daily routine items and stock up on them and if you don't actually need them for anything you know give them a sell once you got a few it's fun to see the money a little dopamine rush when the money goes up so for me it's eggs I go over to these girls over here I milk them get their milk go over to these girls over here trim them get their wool and then I'll come back over here I will throw the milk in here and I will throw the wool in here and then tomorrow the next day when I wake up I will have cheese and cloth and right now currently I don't use cheese or cloth really for anything and it's not anything I'm working to so I'll bring the cloth in here and chest I'll bring the cloth in here and I'll stack it when I've got a lot of cloth fertilizer because you need a lot of fertilizer for it to actually be useful especially with the garden I have um, milk eggs always cook the eggs more they they're worth more that way um, so once I've got a decent stack of it I'll gather it all up I'll bring it over to John and I'll get a decent amount of money for it or somewhere in the hundred thousands and if I've got a lot maybe the two hundred thousands but obviously that takes a little while with the way that I do it so obviously that is one way to make money now on to tip number two all right so my tip number two is gonna be to get level two uh, metal detecting so sooner or later you'll get to a point where you've been metal detecting a lot You've got a desired amount of items stacked up. Like, I don't have everything that you can find out there here, but I've got a decent amount of what I have. Eight old contraptions, 39 old gears, uh, keys, whatnot. So if you get to a certain point where you're like, all right, I've got enough stuff stacked up. I need to make some money. This works with level two metal detecting and a motorcycle. So obviously you can go out and just normal metal detect for an entire day. But I think it's more fun to ride out on your motorcycle because sooner or later you do get a uh, was it uh, permit points for distance driven on a motorcycle just like distance walked on land. So you just drive around and look for these. Dig. Got that. Cool. I just got you know three three items, and you're just gonna go around your island it's also fun to kind of explore while you're doing this if you haven't gone and explored your entire island really yet see how far you can go on your motorcycle drive around keep looking at the ground though and when you see one of those little level two metal detecting spots stop dig it up and uh keep going my area is kind of sparse because i actually just recently did one of these runs but there'll be times where, you know, I'm here and I can see six of these little uh, spots in front of me. And it, you know, it works out well. And if you have enough in your inventory, like I said before, it's okay to sell some of it. And you'll get a decent amount from John for selling stuff like that that you find. In tip, the second and a half tip is obviously with shiny discs. Don't sell them to John. 
always bring them to Franklin, because Franklin will give you, like, Franklin, you're my way, sir. Franklin will give you 8,900, let me get off this noisy bike. Franklin will give you 8,900, I think it is, dinks per disc. So right now, if I went and gave my two discs to Franklin, I'd get, you know, 16, 17, 1800 dollars, just like that. And obviously, if you go do a full day of a run like that, you're going to have five, six discs on you. So that's also another half kind of point benefit to doing that. Obviously, you can just go out and normal metal detect. It's a little bit slower. It's going to take a while to run back. Motorcycle is just, I think it's fun to do, and it's pretty fast. On to tip number three. All right, so tip number three is going to be these eggs. So, I don't know where the parents are. Actually, it looks like the parents were maybe killed by something. And, yeah, the parents will kill you. will attack you instantly. So, I don't know where they are actually right now. But, this egg. So, this egg, easier if you have a motorcycle, depending on where you are. I don't know if you, I mean, if you build your base right near one of these little areas, that's cool. Mine's not that close. But, you're going to take this egg, and you're going to bring it back to your base. All right, you're gonna bring the egg back to your base. And if I could pick this up. All right, I picked it up. You're gonna bring this egg in. John? Ah, oh, it's Sunday, he's closed. All right, I'm gonna sleep one day and then I'll show you how much the egg makes. All right, we're back and it is the next day. And the egg is obviously still here. And we're gonna bring it to John. Throw it on the scale, that's how you sell it. He's gonna come over, he's gonna praise it. 2.35 kilograms, which is about average. $20,000 for it, yes. So as you saw when I was over there, there was about three or four emu eggs. So when those eggs do pop up, I think it's in about spring, um, you go grab five of them, that's an easy $100,000. It might take you, you know, half a day to do it, but I mean, it's easy money. Now step three and four are kind of combined because what step four is, is the, I've mentioned this before, I think in my, what was it, 20 hours in video or whatever, um, is the jewels that you can find. So they're rubies down in the mines that I've found. I'm not going to go down now because I don't have a pass and it's going to take way too long. But down in the mine you can find rubies and you carry them the same way that I carried that egg. Over your head you can't put it down. Especially in the mines because you can't take a motorcycle down there, so you, it's not, you can drop it on your motorcycle and drive it back. But with the rubies, you can pick them up, drop them in here, go out, find another one, bring it back, drop it in here, go out, find another one, bring it back, drop it in here, and then go up the elevator and then just bring all three over to John. The only problem with that, it's a good side hustle, we'll call it, because... You know, I only go down to the mines if I need ore. I have a decent amount of ore stored. It's usually just when I need iron. Um, but when I go down, if I find one of those rubies, or two of those rubies, it's a nice, you know, chunk of change. Each one's worth like 70,000-ish dollars. So it's, you know, I come up and I've got 140,000 extra dollars in cash. Um, I can just show you my bank account right now because I wasn't able to earlier. What? So as you can see, I do have 1,345,000, so plus that is about 1.5 million. Um, but yeah, so you bring those over to John, you sell them to him, he gives you 70,000 a pop. As I was saying, the only thing with that is that it's not super easy to find those. I've been down to the deep mines maybe five times, and I've only found rubies in two runs. I found two in one run and one in another one. So I've only found three together out of five times I've gone down there, and it costs $20,000 a time to go down there so if you think about that that's a hundred thousand dollars i found three of these that's about uh what am i saying that's about two hundred thousand dollars so it's still going down five times it's still a hundred thousand dollar profit ish but uh a hundred ten thousand dollar profit but um it's not a sustainable way you can't just keep going down in the mines and expecting to find rubies all right now for tip number five all right, so I also mentioned this in my 20 hours in video. Gardening is my biggest main source of income. As you can see, I have this massive garden and it's sparsely, 
sparsely populated because uh, it's just watermelons, so they need a one space around it to grow. I kind of crowded them in here, hoping to get more watermelons. As you can see, some of the areas where these watermelons are growing to aren't tilled because that's where the watermelons are going to grow. They offshoot from the main plant. They don't grow on the main plant. So the tip with this is you're going to want a one season fruit or vegetable. So for example, watermelons are only in the summer. I think carrots are only in the winter. Pumpkins, I think, are only in the fall. Even potatoes, which are a two season one, I think, they're like winter and fall. Those would get you a decent amount of money. So what I do is I take my potatoes, my carrots. I don't know if I have any carrots in here now because I haven't. I did only just started doing this. But I'll take my potatoes, I'll take my wheat, I'll take my onions, and you know my sugar cane, whatever, and I'll store a little bit of it. So 35 of these, 20 of these, in case I ever someone's like, oh, I want you to build me, you know. What am I doing? If I want you to make me a pot roast or a prime roast, whatever, and I go look here and I go, okay, I need three potatoes, two carrots, one kale, three green beans, pumpkin. Okay, I can do that because I have some stored over from earlier. So I try and keep a little bit on me, sell the rest. So with carrots and potatoes, carrots and potatoes produce, I'm talking too much with my hands right now, I'm not moving around. Um, carrots and potatoes produce maybe three or four every crop. So with a carrot, I can fill every single one of these plots with carrot seeds and they will they'll grow a three or four carrots in every single spot on like watermelons or pumpkins and i'll come out of there with 500 carrots 500 potatoes and you go to john and you sell it and you get two to three hundred thousand dollars that has been my main way of making money every week or so in game i get you know carrots or pumpkin or pumpkins, watermelons, potatoes, and I go and I sell them to John. The only thing with carrots, potatoes, and onions is once you pick them, they're gone. You got to plant them all again. Watermelons and pumpkins will keep growing throughout the season until the season ends. Um, maintaining this garden, you might think, is kind of annoying because it's massive, but my townspeople, once you start friending them or whatever, will come and they water my garden for me so i'll go do my daily tasks like i showed you with the first tip i'll go pick up my eggs i'll go pick up my cheese i'll pick up my fertilizer milk the womb bat thingies or vombats whatever the heck they're called shave my little platypus looking things and then come back and half my garden will be watered even if it's not watered you get the iron watering can you upgrade your farming enough you can water six plots at a time it go it's le it's less than a five minute job um let's go in here so i can show you we don't have any single season yeah, we don't have any single season crops in here these are all every season or double multi-season two seasons but you go in there when there are single season crops and you go you buy them you plant them you wait your week just keep playing the game and then uh, randomly you'll get three hundred thousand dollars what i like to do is i'll put I'll only keep uh, about 100,000 dinks on me, so right now I've got 131,000, whatever, for stuff that I just need to buy around the town, or I need to upgrade buildings and stuff. The only time I go in there to take out money is like, when I upgraded my house, it was 225,000 dinks, so I went in, I took out 150,000 or whatever, and I went and bought my house. 150,000, you know, isn't going to knock me too far from trying to get 3 million dinks, which is what I'm doing right now to try and get a helicopter. But, um, oh, other thing, there are sprinklers and water tanks that you can buy. This might be helpful for you. It's not really helpful for me because I'd have to give up so many crops because the sprinkler, I think when you upgrade your farming, you get better sprinklers. But right now the level one, or not farming, it's like irrigation or whatever. But my level one irrigation, I these sprinklers only reach one tile out which means obviously they're only going to water what's next to them and these reach 10 tiles out so you can have them on the edge of your garden because they need to be within 10 tiles of the sprinkler so you need those the water tanks too 
my problem is I'd have to, because my garden is so large, I'd have to give up a bunch of plots of land to put in those sprinklers, and I don't really have a decent place to put the water tanks. I mean, I could put them right here on the outside and just adjust my road, maybe move my houses. But right now, the way I'm doing it right now is working out fine for me. But obviously, you choose whatever works out best for you. If you don't want to water your garden every day, you can have it auto done. Um, and obviously, just massing up, uh, kind of like tip 5.5, massing up anything is going to give you money, except for shells. Shells are worthless. You can get a bunch of those, and you'll get like 50 dinks, maybe. But like even fruit like this, anything cooked is more money even fruit like this this if i go through and harvest all this and get you know my 800 fruit and go and sell it without it being cooked i get maybe 50 like, like 50 thousand dings when it's all said and cooked i'll get you know closer to a hundred thousand but cooking 800 things is a full day task sitting here and just cooking it constantly all right so that is all my tips on how to make money it's how i've been you know slowly building up my savings in dinkum um if you have any other questions or anything like that feel free to ask me in the comments please hit that subscribe button hit that like button helps me out a lot obviously as a small newer youtuber um but uh thank you guys for watching i'll see you guys next time bye